Hey, hey, people, and welcome back to another Souls of another another Souls of Dark Souls, another episode of Dark Souls. Last time, a lot of things happened. In Firelink, the clerics were gone. The firekeeper's dead. Lothric is gone. The uh, crestfallen warrior is quite sad about the appearance of Frampt, and Frampt sent us on a journey towards An Orlando by way of Sense Fortress, where we promptly entered and died. It's a treacherous house of traps, and this episode will be probably covering pretty much this area to its full extent. Toning down the volume a little bit, and... Parium, and... okay, missed that one, but it's okay. Seems like I got that item back then. But yeah, let's just delve straight into it. Let's keep it real and about the game. You can see there's like... On, uh, down there, there's one of those... If you can see, there's a titanite demon. There's one of those rare, really dangerous foes in this massive pit of tar. And that might be an idea that I'm going... Actually... No, I'm not going to skip anything. Let's see if I can make this fall. We can hide in here so it doesn't get us, because what's in the tar pits is a few soul items and a scythe weapon. A bardish, if you will. For it by its proper name, I do think. And up here, through the long ladders, we can actually access the roof of the whole place. Here's the item we just saw. Another soul item. And this doorway, of course, an illusion. This chute leads up towards this area. A fine place for fight clubs and yeah, and here's the giant who pulled the chain to open up the gates to this place. If you come up here you can get an oh, that's a dangerous move. As I was saying. Dead again. Not this move to start. I can't remember how many souls there were in the bloodstain that were left at sense, but it might have been a few. So let's make this a little bit simpler for ourselves. Pop twin humanities for the sake of reversing hollowing, since when we were packed to human form, that is the only time we can actually kindle a bonfire. And this bonfire is useful, I should have probably done this before so we'd have easier time exploring dark root and such with our 10 Estus flasks. If we try to kindle it further, we'd need the right of kindling. And if you remember, Petra spoke about it. It's the right that the clerics are on a quest to seek. And I do want to tackle the giant on the roof. He actually drops a fairly useful item. But the downsides of this Y-hander are definitely coming to play here. Uh, its huge stamina consumption is quite dangerous. At least on these relatively lower levels. A little trick you can do, the enemies will kill themselves on the traps if given the chance or encouraged. Okay, never mind. Not my parrying day. But yeah, I've been really enjoying getting back into this game. I mean, I don't really keep up with the off-camera recordings of this game. I mean, not recordings, like, I don't play a lot of characters besides this one when I'm having some free time. I just do this for fun, and so far it's been really quite fulfilling, and I'm trying to keep up the daily schedule of uploading for quite a while, as long as I can, since it's, it's quite fulfilling. So yeah, thank you for the relative continued support. Not, um, not many views, but I do appreciate each one of them, so hey. This one's for you. And by this one I mean the sip of Estus we'll take up there. Where we will promptly not die to a freaking giant again. And I do hope the uh, quality of the content has been bearable. There's the dangerous move again. You see how much it hit us for. But it does tire them out afterwards which would normally allow you a few swings. 
Seems like it still does. And he should be promptly getting up now. Let's just torch this pool. There we go. So yeah, they're dangerous if you're low on health. And we're fairly low on health. And what they drop is a titanite chunk. It's the next step above. There's normal titanite shots, then large shots, and then chunks. And chunks, in my opinion, they're quite rare to come by. Slabs, of course, the last ones. There's only a few of them guaranteed per playthrough. And farming them is very time consuming. If not, it's just very unlikely to farm them. And yeah, you can run past the pendulums. If you get the timing right, they're easy to bypass. Avoid the lightning, if at all possible. And then run. Many nooks and crannies in this place. And yeah, it often gets the best of me. This guy is a pain in the ass. If you pardon my French. And there down there, you see two more of them actually. And this guy's apparently. Oh, there he goes. Falls into the tar below. Be wary of the traps, of course. We did free big, f big fat, big hat Logan, beyond that um, breaking wall last time. And I can't remember. I think some of the man serpents here do respawn. There they are. All oh, right, the stones are com going to a different way, of course, because the mechanism around this building changes. We did get the... what's its face? The covetous gold serpent ring last time. And yeah, there we go. Imper... oh! He actually came towards us. How strange. Well, doesn't matter, he's dead now. I do want to check the ring. Been a while since I've read this myself. Imperfect dragon, a symbol of the... M <sighs> do you mind? You see, the strong attack completely drains our stamina. And maybe now I can read it. Habit of devouring prey even larger than itself has led to an association with gluttony. Yeah, allows you to find more items. Be wary of the dart traps, and let's make our f way down here, as we did on the last episode. Seems like the mechanism is still rolling the boulders down here, which is fine. And just follow them along. And they broke the area again. Good stuff. And in here, a dangerous encounter. Precarious room and quite the cheap introduction to a specific enemy. If you're familiar with, uh, like, iconic role-playing foes, then you know mimics are one of them. And yeah, this is an ugly introduction to one of them. If you do throw a Lloyd's Talisman towards them, you can actually grab the item without having to anger them. But they are not too tough. They possess a few dangerous attacks and they're quite agile. And if you open the je chest, uh, which turns out to be a mimic, well, it's, it's ugly. And here we have a bloodied elevator, which should indicate troubles ahead. Because if you go once more up, Actually, let's see if we can catch a glimpse. Yeah, you see the spikes there on the roof. An ugly sight. Really devious area. And this bridge leads up to where the boulders fall. And down there is the small little chute that takes to the wall where the hanging prisons were kept. And this one will open later on. Let's hope the mechanism hasn't rotated towards our side. Nope, so we can safely go in here. And let's turn it this way so it's out of our way completely. Now this is another junction of the area. If we'd go here, you see this is where Siegmeier was sitting and he's still there. He should proceed forwards once he finds out that this has been turned. And down here, the ramparts and another lightning throwing serpent man. And in here the route that these uh, boulders normally fall. We can actually access the item in here now, so let's do that. If memory serves, it might have been... Was this a spell or... 
like dark mage armor? No? Maybe I'm completely remembering this wrong. Was this the armor? I'm fairly certain. Yeah, black sorcerer armor. This is the one that the Griggs in Firelink was wearing. Secret sorcerers. They secretly work with sound-based spells and never reveal themselves. And indeed, the so normal sorcerer item is just for the rookies. And the sorcerer that we picked up is Hush. Certain surreptitious sorcerer at Venheim Dragon School masks all noise of caster. Some furtive shadow mage government, which sounds cool as all hell. Has the mechanism changed? Alright, we did turn it this way, didn't we? We did. It's just still, we can make our way up there if we're quick enough. Sometimes this thing rotates itself, given enough time, and it's quite strange. And in here, you should be familiar with these traps by now. Just be prudent and we'll make it out fine. Further areas with pendulums. Just wait for the opportunity and leg it. Not too hard to time. And in here, several enemies. Take care of the sorcerer so he doesn't pester us later on. And we find out one of these guys coming after us. Didn't get the parry again. Or repost, rather. You can hear them. Some of them are aggro to us. And in here, another one. Guarding some item. They do this little hissing roar when they notice us. Seems like our one-handed parrots are enough to kill them. And it gives you these large shards in case... Well, it's basically, at this stage, you can make it here just fine without an unupgraded weapon. But it'll be difficult, of course. I mean, we're doing fine with weapons. We have two candidates we can keep using. And this bridge is the make it or break it situation in this area. As you saw, there was one of those sorcerers behind us. Double trap platforms. But we made it out just fine. Now let's take care of this fool. Bye. He didn't seem to fall to... Oh, yep, there we go. Fell to his death. And this area just takes you a floor lower. Oops. Yeah, I accidentally did press that one. And fuck gate. Not a boss. But rather, we're outside. And as you can see, this chant here seems to be placing the boulders on the mechanism. And remember when Frampt, the King Seeker, mentioned that many have come to this fortress, but none have made it through. Apparently among them, Knights of Baldur, that we saw in the parish as well. Poor people. I will be trying to pick up as many of the items in here as I can, just to make it go easier. The two-handed uh, strong attack combo is quite strong. He dropped us a shard. Fancy that. Uh, you can actually tell the mimic chests by the chains. I will try to show it when we find the next one. The symbol of a true knight. Grant the strength to face various hardships. This is defense against flame. Not much law to be had in those, but they're nice enough. And in here... Take your time to observe the surroundings, and you'll see these burn marks on the ground. And that'll be the cause of it. Now we'll make a quick run into a very well hidden area. And oh, god. He burned us quite good here. Oh, wrong item. God damn. Am I dead? Or am I dead? Ooh, I'm not dead. I don't normally let him get the best of me, but yeah, more burn marks and items. Just grab them and run. And in here, this broken fence leads you to a sacred hidden bonfire in here. Quite handy to have. Well rest gladly, and let's actually dump a few souls into well. I will I will use a few soul items to get some levels up in dexterity. Maybe this will do. Yes, I think that is fine. Let's not use the uh, absolute bigger ones. 
Yep, that should be fine. We do want to get those damage stats up. Since our health issues will be... Well... We'll have an item soon that will help us with that. Be wary of the bomb thrower again. It is hard to see where he's aiming, but he often throws him, throws him to the platform where he saw you. And further onwards, we hear crossbow sounds, and overlooking to the... If you can see, that's the belfry to the parish. And one of these knights, who we also found at the um, haunted parish. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm throwing the little success I've had. Gosh darn it. Apologies for the bad play. Actually, no. I said it would be an organic playthrough. No fake stuff here. This area is deceptive and it shows you a lot of these rooftop areas where you ca actually can't quite go. And in here, an encounter with a human looking character. With a rapier and a knightly armor. This is the elite knight armor we picked up in Darkroot. And he's flattened. Rickard's rapier. Let us check the item. Rapier with intricate decorations. Chosen weapon of the infamous undead prince Rickard. Rickard's exploits are told in a monomyth. He was born into royalty, but wandered the land in a fateful, ill-conceived journey. He became undead and disappeared up north. And that might have been my Skype noise on the background. So that was that was undead prince Rickard, by all accounts that we can tell. Many have gone through since, but none have made it, apparently, according to Frampt. And a rare ring of sacrifice. Sacrificial rite of a Valka, the goddess of sin. The magenta shaded ring is especially rare. Hmm. Protects you from death completely. If you're afraid of cursed basilisks, like in the depths or further on in the game, from any curse applying enemies, you might want to use one of those. At, at least if you don't have purging stones and stuff. Well, mostly I just find them there, for them to be best saved later. There is a handful of those rings of sacrifice around the game, and that was a rare one. Again, run from the boulder thrower, or bomb thrower ladder, rather. And in here you can actually make this jump. Just hug the left side, and you should make it just fine. In here, a guy dressed in... He seems a bit big, but it's just because he's floating off the ground. But yeah, he seems to be wearing the armor that we saw on the enemies with the tower shields and maces. Let's see, hear what he has to say. <sighs> ah, what? What? Who, who are you? Ah, another undead, eh? I took my son's fortress alone. But I am no different from those vile creatures. I was driven by conceit. Ah, you think you're different? That you can handle them? Yes, I, I remember that feeling. For I was the same. So, let me help you out with your soul searching. He's a merchant, trapped in here, and we'll see what he has to sell. He supplies large shards, which is really useful if you're lacking, and lacking a well-upgraded weapon. As for weapons, he's also the great sword. Very few have what it takes to wield this incredible heavy damage dealing monster. A favorite of the Knight Spare Nike, none for their uh, knight of the Knight Spare Nike, yeah. None for their heavy armor and black iron targets. A great axe which we found in the depths, a Baldur Shield, more lore about them. The ancient kingdom, so they're quite old. It has massive stability, which makes it one of the best shields in the game. And when it comes to stability, which is the amount of stamina it requires for you to block a single blow, it is the second best. Baldur was the home of Night King Rendell, but the kingdom was reduced to ruins after a widespread, a widespread outbreak of undead. We've seen that too. Tower Shield, and it's the same design that the big knights with the maces and grey shields we just saw, and who seem to be wearing the same armor as him, used by Knight's Baron, uh, Knight Baronike, known for his heavy armor. Cr uh, heavily defensive, but ultra heavy. Yeah. And then Hissel's armor. 
here we have find Siegmeier did mention that he's of Katharina and there's the Amish for them. Outside Katharina it is often ridiculed for its onion-like shape, in infuriating the proud knights, but the masterfully forged curving design makes it very effective for pairing. It's just uh, quite heavy and great armor. And here seems to be the armor the merchant himself is wearing, along with the knights. Knights of Baronike, so now we know there is a knight by the name of Baronike, or was rather, and Knights of Baronike as well, as in a unit. Once extol as the mightiest of might, became undead and ventured to Lordran, but their journey was for naught as they went hollow and became a threat to all undead. And then he sells the Balder armor as well. I'll grab the steel leggings because I quite like them, and we will pro potentially have the chance to use them soonish. Let's see if he has anything else to say. There's nothing more to say. I'm finished. We're both on the brink, you see. End of story. You bloody fool. He is quite convinced that everything... Well, seems like he's just given up. Let me give you a nibble of advice. Don't even consider visiting Amorondo. Not in your state. For a century they've tried and failed. The Night King Rendell, Black Iron Tarkas, and even Logan himself. If you won't stand a chance, you'll be eaten alive. But go along if you wish. If only to deepen your despair. Hmm. Let me give you a... For the Night King Rendell, you won't... Hmm. So yeah, apparently a lot of, the, a lot of these fairly uh, powerfully lauded characters seem to have taken this same journey. And we did encounter Logan, who he was talking about, and mentioned that it that even Logan himself has made it. And he thought he was done for, but Logan's alive and well. He was just trapped in here for a reason or another. And here we find a cage key. Hanging cage in Sense Fortress. If a hapless adventurer becomes fatigued during an imprudent attempt to overcome the fortress, the serpent mode will not kill him, but lock him up in a lonely cage. Eventually, unless they have forgotten, they drag the victim off to who knows where. And we'll find the answer to the location of the prisoners later on in the game. And we're being invaded. Let's see how it turns out. Uh... Let's see how far he can... I think he'll throw them on the... There we go. Just trying to keep my eyes to find the invader. Let's just continue on with them. Difficult to make that jump, but yeah, you can do it. Exciting that we're getting relative... Like, here's a summoning sign too. And by this corner, another Knight of Baldur. But yeah, as the merchant spoke... Many legendary characters have tried to come through the fortress, and apparently none of them made it. And... Oh, there he is. Another freaking sorcerer. Oh. Where's the spells? Oh no. And there we go. Destroyed by Crystal Soul Mass again. Well, it happens to the best and the worst of us. Gosh, it's always the twinks, isn't it? And as you can see, he was wearing actually Big Hat Logan's uh, gear, as made evident by the Big Hat, and crystallized souls which destroyed us in Blight Town as well. It is powerful, like even on it, even when you're low leveled and using it. If you like, hmm, how to put it in the layman's terms. Well, basically, he has made it through the game to a point where he can equip these crystal spells at the level of roughly 40. And now he's using it to defeat players around the similar journey. Oh my god. Can't believe this didn't stagger him. But yeah, as you saw there, this Y-hander bounced off the walls two times. So it is not the most useful weapon to use in tight spaces. We do have the long sword on our inventory, but uh, man, I don't know. And if you're wondering why do I, how these invasions happen, and it is when whenever we are human, we are eligible for invasions. And I do like the online aspect, which is why I try to play as human most of the time. Let's see if this guy, he doesn't actually follow us. Easy to miss here, but there's a shortcut. 
and we'll have to take one of them off. I didn't run out fast enough. Well, it serves to show where this one will take. The first bridge in this whole area. So it's a shortcut to the start, if you need to make it back. They can hit through the cages, so watch out. And there he fell. But as you might have seen outside before we got killed, we are reaching the end of this area. And it doesn't go higher up much further. A peculiar bridge. The bomb lubber is a dangerous foe, as is this crossbowman who we finally find out to be up here, wearing the armor of Baldur as well. And shape of things to come, you can actually drop down to that platform and kill him. This one will respawn though, as to keep the traps active. And as you see, this precarious platform leading up to this crumbled tunnel is guarded by a massive chunk or a suit of armor, and that would be the boss of the area. Let's take sweet, sweet revenge on this bomb thrower. Hello. 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 There we go. Do the stompy attack and then you can hide inside. Wait for him to get tired. And then take care of it. They do have a hefty amount of health, but we should be managing, yeah. And as for his drops, another chunk. And then very satisfying if you want to roll through these. <laughs> oh damn it, I was hoping to stay human. So I could showcase a spectacular NPC encounter. But you might do it yourself. In here, in this room, right about here, you'll find the sign to summon a hero that the... A uh, sudden merchant over the broken tower told us about Black Iron Tarkas. A character who is more than capable of defeating this boss alone. And it is the Iron Golem. There are several tactics to defeating this. Mostly just try to stick behind him, but we'll see it soon, soon enough. Ah, we're not actually doing too much damage. So, yeah, leveling our. Dexterity is in order now. You see he staggers when you hit him into feet and falls down eventually. And yes, you can use this to your advantage and make him topple off the tower for an instant kill. It also buys you ample amount of time to just go to town on this poor giant. Or Iron Golem rather, not a giant. Oh, I wasn't wearing the shield. His attacks are quite well telegraphed, so you can always dodge out of the way. That grab attack is fairly dangerous, though. It is quick. He is sadly a bit of a pushover. And for our troubles, we find the core of an iron golem. And one human humanity. Soul serving as the core of the iron golem, guardian of Sen's fortress, and slayer of countless heroes seeking an Orlando. Originally a bone of an everlasting dragon. Huh. Okay. So yeah. He was guarding this area here. And up there there would be nothing else than an Orlando's walls. And if we examine this sprite of sprite ring of light, this happens.
It looks like we've made it to An Orlando, the city of the gods, and that is quite a feat for a young undead. And we've done better than some of the heroes of the past, so yeah, it is something our Flynn here can be quite proud of if we have the right Chester to be proud of something. There we go. Yay! Thank you for joining me. It took us a few tries. <laughs> well, it took me a few tries, I mean. For all I know, you'll just one-shot the whole freaking place, but yeah. Since Fortress is a bit of a bitch, catch you on the next one, and thank you so much for watching, and bye bye